Hey friends, just a few years ago, we only had maybe one or two options for LED contact POI, and now there's a whole plethora of options out there. So in today's review, I'm going head to head between all of these different options on the market. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, bringing you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I am helping you figure out what is your best option out there for LED contact poi. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spinballs, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all of these awesome companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. Goodness, so you remember back when your only options for LED contact poi were either the spin optics or the flow mojas or just something that you cobbled together yourself? Well, a lot has changed in that time. So in today's video, we're gonna be comparing a bubble poi from Ignis Pixel. We're also gonna be comparing flow mojo poi from Flow Toys. We're gonna to be comparing iso poi from Neo poi, as well as orb poi from ultra poi. And finally, we're also gonna be putting them all head to head against the spin optic poi from Lantern. Smith. And before anybody asks, no, I'm not going to be reviewing any sets of pod mods. The reason for this are threefold. Number one is that the internal electronics on all pod mods are just capsules 2.0. So, I mean, at that point for about half of my review rubric, uh, it just winds up being redundant. Number two, there are so many companies out there that offer pod mods that it would double or even triple the length of this review. And finally, I wanna restrict this review to solutions that have been engineered end to end. That means basically that one or more companies have come up with a solution for each and every piece of the poi rather than having to hack off the shelf parts in order to make them work. And quite frankly, there's so much content that is going to have to be packed into this review that I'm just going to dive straight into it. I'm going to take you through them all in terms of their features, ease of use, durability, brightness, battery life, give you some personal thoughts on each one before finally taking you through price on each of these two. And of course, we're going to be going by my standard comparison rubric, which is that each and every one of these POI is going to be graded in its features, ease of use, durability, and battery life on a three-point scale. That is a one is does not meet expectations, a two is does meet expectations, and a three is exceeds expectations. So first and foremost, let us talk about features. So I don't really ask much of my LED POI period. Really, all I wanna see is that I can access a number of individual colors as well as a rainbow fade and a strobe mode if I so choose. In addition, I think it's really important to have LED handles now for contact POI, specifically because when you're doing contact rolls, it effectively means that the trick kind of disappears in the dark and everything. LED handles are kind of the way to get around that. So in order to get a three on this scale, not only does a product have to meet those two prerequisites, it also has to add something unique to the market to make the product feel like its own. So how do they all stack up? So the Bubble Poi from Ignis are very unique. Not only are they the first programmable set of LED Poi, that is you can get them to display graphics in their strips of LEDs and everything, uh, but also they can be controlled via a smartphone app. That is, I can remote control these with my smartphone and tell them to go ahead and display any particular color that I may want, say switching back and forth between red, or blue, or I can make them display an individual picture that uh, happened to be uh, either already programmed into them or that I can upload. And of course, something brand new that's happened since I did my original review for these POI is that now you can also get programmable LED handles for them. So yeah, they check off all the boxes. That's pretty awesome. Uh, these definitely get a three on the scale. Okay, so when it comes to Flow Mojo Poi from Flow Toys, um, I will fully admit that I am a big fan of these and I have been for a while now. Um, in addition to the fact that they have spent the past few years just like packing these chock full of different modes and everything, uh, they've also made it possible to do things like adjust the brightness, uh, be able to group these together so that you can also use them in conjunction with remote control and everything. Um, um, really, they only just barely miss getting a three on this scale because of the handle situation. The LED handles that you can get for these uh, from Flow Toys, of course, are their capsule handles. 
Um, that might be to your taste, but personally I find for contact poi, you want handles that are weighted significantly less than the heads. And when there's even weighting, it definitely creates some problems there. Um, that might be to your taste, and if that's the case, then feel free to ignore uh, my input on this. Uh, one quick note though is that uh, according to Sean and Prisna, they do have an LED handle option that is intended to be coming out in the coming year and everything, but uh, as of the publication of this video, it is not on the market. All right, so what about Isopoi from Neopoi? Well, uh, they definitely have all the modes that I could ask for them and everything from uh, the different colors that you can get to uh, the rainbow fades and strobes and everything. And in addition, they do have these amazing LED handles, which um, as I said in my review for these, uh, and I will say again now, I think they ought to be marketing these handles as their own product too, because the form factor is great. They're super bright and the battery life is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to give Isopoi a two. So what about Orpoi from Ultrapoi? Well, yeah, I mean, they have all the colors I could want. They have strobe and fade modes and everything, as well as one of the most popular models for LED handles on the market right now and everything. These are really just a no fuss product. Uh, yeah, an easy two on the scale. So that takes us to Spinoptic Poi from Lanternsmith, which are one of the most unique entries on this list because they have these fiber optic tethers that is uh, every single part of the Poi is illuminated so that as you're doing whatever tricks you want to and everything, there's literally no part of the Poi that people can't see no matter how dark it is out and everything. I would give Lanternsmith a three on this one, but for one problem, and that is that the number of modes you have access to is really low. You can control brightness and you've got access to a lot of individual colors and everything, but there's no rainbow fade or strobe modes or anything like that. So as much as it pains me, um, I gotta give these a two. All right, so now let's talk ease of use. So for ease of use, one of my biggest tests is just straight out of the box without reading the instruction manual, can I get something that is usable with this prop? And also how difficult a learning curve is there for me to be able to use it competently? So when it comes to the Orb Poi, I mean, they're programmable POI, so in theory, you're meant to be able to upload new images to them and everything. You are also meant to be able to control the brightness as well as uh, different colors and strobes and everything. All of these things would be nearly impossible to navigate with a single button. And in fact, in my review for these, I pointed out that uh, without the benefit of an external control, uh, the utility of these is quite low. But with the smartphone app that is now available on both Android and iOS, uh, it completely changes this picture. Uh, it's really intuitive. It's super easy to use and everything. It includes some awesome things like a fitness tracker and everything. Uh, the one caveat I will stick in there, of course, is that the iOS version of the app is still in beta and uh, there's a lot of features that still haven't been unlocked in it and everything. But yeah, in concert with the smartphone app, I'm gonna have to give these a three for ease of use. All right, so now let's talk about the Flow Mojo Poi. Now, um, Flow Toys has definitely spent a large part of the last few years just like packing these with different modes as well as the ability to adjust things about them from the brightness to how they are grouped with uh, other capsules and everything. They have a smartphone app that's gonna be coming out relatively soon to be able to program these and everything, which will be very, very, very welcome. Um, I will say that uh, I can very easily find something very quickly that I like with these lights and everything. So um, I'm gonna give it a two. Uh, I think that once the smartphone app comes out and everything, it's gonna be a lot more helpful and everything. But as it stands right now, yeah, you can get up and running pretty quickly, but the deeper you get into this and everything, I feel like the harder it is to keep straight all of the different options you have at your fingertips. And as for Isopoi, um, so I will continue confess that I find changing the different mode groups on these to be kind of confusing. With just about every other set of LED POI out there and everything, that like holding down for a couple seconds is the way that you adjust an individual mode rather than changing pages and everything. 
You know, granted, it doesn't take that long to learn how to change your expectations on that and everything, but I, I will also say that getting deep into this and everything is a wee bit of a challenge. That said, just getting them up and running and everything, um, yeah, it's pretty easy. It did not take me much time at all and everything. So yeah, I'm gonna give them a two. All right, so some people will know that Orb Poi are basically my gold standard in terms of a simple interface that requires almost no time to learn it and everything. Now, of course, uh, they have fewer modes than I think almost any other set of contact Poi on this table. I have never had the misfortune of forgetting how to do it and everything, and even if I do, the ways by which I can relearn and everything tend to be pretty quick. Um, so yeah, I've got to give Orb Poi a three. All right, so that takes us to the Spinoptic Poi from Lantern Smith. Now, um, these have almost as simple an interface as the, uh, as the Orb Poi do. The one difference being that you can control brightness on these, which you can't do on the Orb Poi. Just in terms of turning them on, you push the button, it couldn't be easier. Um, in terms of switching which color you're using and everything, you kind of like have to do this thing where it's like half presses and everything. You have to get the timing right in terms of am I controlling the brightness or am I controlling the color switch and everything. Uh, but you know, in terms of getting up and running, yeah, these couldn't be more simple. I'm gonna give these a three as well. So those of you all who are playing along might be noticing that it is more likely for a set of poi to get a three on uh, ease of use if it doesn't have as many features. And yeah, actually, I think that those two different variables are related in a lot of respects. So, you know, there, there's a give and take there for sure. All right, now let's talk durability. Okay, so, Bubble Poi. Um, it should be said right off the bat that both the heads and the handles of the Bubble Poi are 3D printed. Now, I have some concerns about the long-term durability of 3D printed parts, specifically because they are printed in layers, and the gaps between those layers are possible points of weakness. In addition, um, both the heads and the handles, the strips of LEDs are along a curved and flexible surface. And uh, of course, anybody who's played around with programmable poi will know that it is quite easy to damage uh, those boards that carry the LEDs and everything. Right? Um, I have actually managed to damage components of these already. Um, namely, when I was swapping out for the LED handles and everything, uh, in trying to take off the old handles, uh, they just straight up tore. Uh, there was no way for me to remove them without breaking them. Uh, those old handles, of course, did not have LEDs in them, but uh, it definitely makes you worried about taking off LED handles. Probably you don't want to do that. In addition, the first set of LED handles that I put on these broke. That is, when I was inserting the bearings into them and everything, uh, one of the strips either shorted out or it went bad or something. So um, I honestly have to give these a one simply because in the short time that I've owned them, I've managed to damage more than one component. I will say as a footnote to that story that I did reach out to the company right after I broke the first set of handles and they sent me another set as soon as they could. So at the very least, they seem to be on top of replacing the components that do break. All right, as for our Flow Mojo Poi, um, Many of you will know that I have been using Flow Toys for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and um, quite frankly, I have yet to break anything of theirs. These are meant to take a beating. Uh, yeah, have no fear there. No fear at all. This, these get a three. Okay, so when it comes to Isopoi, um, I will admit that these are the set on this table that I have used the least thus far. Uh, they are 3D printed, both the heads and the handles, so my concerns about their long-term durability uh, are basically the same as with the Bubble Poi and everything. Um, I will say that uh, I did use these extensively when I first got them and everything and didn't manage to damage them. So I'm gonna give them a two simply because uh, for what I've used them for and everything, they seem pretty reliable. Um, but in terms of the long term, I don't have an answer on that just yet. Okay, so Orb Poi. Um, I will straight up tell you that when I first got these, uh, I had some major uh, kind of concerns about how durable they were going to be simply because, 
you know, um, they use the same chips in the handles that they do in the heads, and the old Ultra knobs were kind of legendary for having things breaking off of the boards and everything. I am pleased to report that this version of the boards does not have that problem whatsoever. These are my workhorse poi right now. Uh, I use them for my monthly flow videos and a lot of my practice sessions and everything. I have beaten these poi to heck and back and they have taken every beating that I could possibly give them. Uh, straight up, these get a three. Okay, so that takes us to Spinoptic Poi from Lantern Smith. Um, so I don't actually use these a whole lot, mainly for performance and everything, so they haven't been put through their paces as much as some of the other options on this table have. Um, that said, an earlier generation version of this product did have a point of weakness right where the tether enters the head and everything. They have now reinforced that point. I have yet to see anybody break it this time around. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give these a two simply because they have been reliable whenever I've depended on them and everything, but I don't feel like I have given them enough abuse to be able to truly give them a three. All right, so next up, let's talk brightness. So for this variable, the rubric is pretty simple. Uh, if I can see the light clearly in the daylight, then it gets a two. Uh, if it is like unpleasantly bright in the daylight, it gets a three. So. Let's take a look at what we get with our bubble poi here. Put it on white, dial up the bright. Oh yeah, yep, that's a three. That's a three. Okay, so flow mojo poi. Of course, we can change the brightness by going to page five. Yeah, it's pretty bright. Okay, I'm gonna give that a two. All right, so next up the iso poi. There we go. Um, yeah, that's 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 pretty decent. We'll give that a two. Okay, orb poi from ultra poi. Yeah, I mean, I can see it, but it's not super bright and everything. I think, I think I'm gonna give these a one. And last but not least, the Spin Optic Poi from Lantern Smith. And, huh, that is actually not as bright as I was expecting. I think a lot of that winds up going into the tether and everything. So, um, yeah, I, I think actually these are about as bright as the Orb Poi, so I'm gonna give them one. All right, so now let's take a look at battery life. So I have two tests that I give to every single set of LED POI that come across my desk. The first test is that I turn them on as bright as they can possibly go and set them to the color white and wait to see how long they can last. This is the most punishing test that I can possibly give the battery. The second test is that I will put them on a rainbow fade mode, uh, usually on about a mid brightness setting and everything to see how long they will last there. The reason being that this is probably a more typical use Use case for them. Okay, so with Bubble Poi from Ignis, you get about one and a half hours on that brightest white mode, but you do a uh, rainbow fade mode at about mid brightness and everything, and they'll last a whole 12 hours. As for the Flow Mojo Poi, the capsules inside will give you about two hours of battery life on the brightest setting with white and everything. As for that rainbow fade mode with them at mid brightness and everything, you're going to get about 11 and a half hours. As far as Isopoi go, you get about two and a half hours of battery life out of that brightest white mode and everything, and then you get three hours of life out of that rainbow fade. It's not that big a difference. Um, that said, the company did reach out to me and they said that uh, their newer kits have better battery life. I haven't had a chance to use them, so I don't know what numbers you can expect, but that is the case with the set that I have. As for Orb Poi, um, you can't really change the brightness on them, but if you just put them in white and leave them in everything, you're gonna get about two hours of battery life. Switch that over to the rainbow fade mode and everything, and the battery life is more like four hours. Now, when it comes to this Binoptic Poi from Lantern Smith, I have to stick a little bit of an asterisk on this one, uh, namely because since they don't have a fade mode, I basically just had to pick a color that was midway through the spectrum and everything to kind of be a placeholder for for a rainbow fade. Now with that said, uh, if you put them on their brightest mode in white, they're gonna last about three hours. If you put them on their middle brightness mode on the middle color, which I think was yellow, uh, I got about 11 and a half hours of battery life out of them. Okay, so now I wanna share some personal thoughts about all of these, including my own experiences spinning with them. So having to spin all of these sets of poi back to back was really, really fascinating, uh, not only in terms of like the feel of all of them, but how different they can really be, you know? Um, 
Interestingly enough, both the Spinoptics as well as the Flowmoja Poi were noticeably lighter than any of the other sets of Poi that I had to work with here. Now, just like I said in my review for them, I think that one of the killer features of the Bubble Poi is the smartphone app that comes with them, especially the fitness tracker that's a part of it and everything. Um, in addition, uh, the LED handles fix one of my biggest beefs that I had with these when they first came and everything, namely that the patterns effectively disappeared when you did any kind of contact Poi spinning with them. Um, I'm pleased to report that now that they have these programmable LED handles as well, it does an amazing job of not only complementing the heads, but also making sure that all of those contact moves actually look like something. So when it comes to the flow mojas, I know that a lot of people don't like that little divot at the end of it where the uh, capsule light comes out of the uh, Lantern Smith Emojisphere and everything. I've never had an issue with it personally. Um, it's one of those things that like, yeah, I notice it, but it doesn't affect my spinning at all. Your mileage may vary. I will also say that in terms of a spinning experience with one of these and everything, you will never have a more comfortable option for a tether than flow cord, specifically the fatty flow cord. It's super comfortable. It's like spinning with silk. Uh, the only downside to it is that it's got a little bit of a stretch to it, not a lot, but especially when you do tosses, you will notice a little, just a hair bit of a sproing to it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's super comfortable and that's especially noticeable when I'm going back to back with all these other pairs. The Isopoi are by a huge margin the heaviest poi that I used in the course of this review and everything. Um, especially doing them back to back with like the Flowmojas or the Spinoptic Poi and everything, that weight really becomes clear right away. I will also say that just the detailing on them is so cool. I've never seen another set of contact Poi spheres that look quite like this. Uh, there's definitely something to be said for the design process and making them look pleasing even if the LEDs aren't on. And I've already said in this review, but the Orb Poi are basically my workhorses at this point. These are super dependable. They're not the brightest poi in the world, um, but when it comes right down to it, uh, for a set of poi that you're gonna use and abuse, I, I like these. Um, if I were to put out just one thing as a note that I would love to see out of the next generation of these, it would actually be more battery life. The only bummer that I have with these is that I only get a couple hours in with them before I have to recharge them and everything. So I've just gotten into the habit of recharging them every day. It'd be nice to be able to say like go a week or two in between recharges if possible. All right, so when it comes to the Spinoptics, the elephant in the room without a doubt is the tethers. While they have that cool fiber optic effect, they also feel very, very, very different. They are an acquired taste, it must be said. And the thing to bear in mind about them too Two is that uh, the plastic that makes them up and everything remembers the last shape that it held when it was at rest. So if you're storing your poi all crumpled up inside your backpack and everything, then that coiled up shape is what the tethers are going to try and find again whenever you throw them or when you attempt contact rolls with them. Um, I have gotten into the habit of hanging my poi from their handles on my prop wall and everything, and that's done a great job of straightening out the tethers. I will say that with the tethers as they are right now, the spinning experience with them is functionally identical to what it is with ropes. The only difference, of course, being that weird tactile feeling that you have uh, touching the tethers. I will also say that when it comes to performances that I'm gonna do that involve contact poi, these are my top choice simply because they're the only poi out there wherein the audience can literally see every single part of the poi as I'm using them, which especially when it comes to contact tricks is super important. All right, so let's talk price now, which it should be said is a little weird to do head-to-head -head comparisons on because um, a lot of these have a variety of different options that like put comparisons in some weird categories and everything, but I'm gonna do the best that I can. So Bubble Poi from Ignis Pixel go for $179 in their most basic set that does not include the LED handles. If you wanna add the LED handles, the lowest price tier comes to about $259 a pair. Um, I highly recommend the LED handles, especially for these, given that when it comes to programmable poi, you definitely want to see the patterns coming out of either end of them. Um, I also now have a promo code through Ignis Pixel, so go ahead and use the promo code DREXFACTOR when checking out there to get a discount on a set of these. 
Flowmoji Poi from Flow Toys sell for $139.95 at flowtoys.com. I also have a promo code there. You use the code DREXFACTOR2020 to get 10% off your order there. Isopoi from Neopoi will run you $175 per pair without the LED handles, and they will run you $225 per pair with the LED handles. No promo code here, I'm afraid. Uh, you get those over at neopoi.com. Orbpoi from Ultrapoi will run you $84.95 without the LED handles, and with the LED handles, they will run you $134.95. I do have a promo code over at Ultrapoi. You can use the code DREXFACTOR with a zero instead of an O at checkout to get a discount on a set of these. And last but not least, Spinoptic Poi from Lantern Smith sell for $289.98 a pair over on lanternsmith.com. Uh, there is no option without the uh, fiber optic tether and handle, so it comes by default. And of course, I have a discount code there. You can use the code DREXFACTOR with a zero instead of an O to get a discount on your own set of these. And of course, I will say that if you can afford it, uh, I would opt for LED handles for any set that you can possibly get. They definitely help, especially with the contact tricks in the dark. Goodness, that was a lot of information. How did I keep all of that straight? Well, I had a cheat sheet. Uh, I put together a little one pager that includes all the information that I went through in the course of this review. And uh, I'm making this one sheet available to all of you out there. Uh, you can go ahead and download this PDF by going to directsfactor.com slash LED contact poi review 2000 and downloading your own copy. Please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help other people find this video and hopefully help my channel grow. And of course, a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind contributions of these amazing folks right here. These are my Flow patrons on Patreon, and they, along with the wonderful folks listed down in the description, make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. If you would like to sign up to support my mission in bringing Flow Arts to the wider world and helping people be creative with their bodies, you can do so by heading over to patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and signing up. There, you can get early access to all of my content, as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future, plus which some great behind the scenes and extra content as well. So go check that out, please and thank you. So after all that, I'm really dying to know, those of you out there that own one or more sets of these LED contact boy, what do you think of them? Um, are there things that I didn't mention in my review that you think that I should have? Um, are there other manufacturers and models of LED contact boy that you think I should have included in this review? Let me know why. Uh, tell me all these things down in the comments. And uh, also, of course, too, give me any questions that you may have on any of these poi that I didn't answer in my review. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, have yourselves a great week, and I will see you with a new tutorial on Wednesday. Peace.